we have two functions g of x and f of x a and c are the x intercepts of f where b is the y intercept and d is the turning point the two functions g of x and f of x they touch each other at the point d which is the turning point of f and then the first equation 5.1.1 determine the length a c like we've already said a and c are the x intercepts of f of x so before we can even get to calculating the length of a c let's determine the x coordinates at a and c okay so we have f of x which is equals to minus x minus 2 squared plus 9 so f of x is equals to so let's solve this x minus 2 everything to the power 2 we're going to have x squared minus 4x plus 4 and then plus 9 let's multiply out by the minus sign if we do that we're going to get f of x being equals to minus x squared plus 4x minus 4 plus 9 so f of x is equals to minus x squared plus 4x and then what is minus 4 plus 9 that is plus 5 so there we go we have f of x now we can go ahead and determine the x coordinates of a and c so we know that these are x intercepts so y is equals to 0 so we're going to have minus x squared plus 4x plus 5 being equals to 0 if we divide both sides by minus 1 we get x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equals to 0 so this is what we need to factorize so factors of minus 5 of which when we add we get minus 4 that is minus 5 and plus 1 okay minus 5 plus 1 is minus 4 and then minus 5 multiplied by plus 1 is minus 5 so x is equals to 5 or x is equals to minus 1 so this is a a is minus 1 and 0 and then c is 5 and 0 so a c will be equals to we don't necessarily need to use the distance formula here because uh, they share the same or oh, well not the same y value but uh, at a y is equals to 0 and at c y is equals to 0 so we can just say that a c is equals to 5 minus minus 1 okay and this is 6 units we know that from here to c is 5 units and then from a to uh, the origin is also one unit because a is minus one so one plus five is equals to six so uh, i think we have done everything uh, the right way there so that is 5.1.1 what about 5.1.2 determine the value of b b it's on g of x we know that g of x is equals to b to the power x well we know that uh, the two functions g of x and f they touch at d so if we can determine the coordinates of d then we can substitute those coordinates of d into g of x and find the value of b let me show you how okay we know that f of x is equals to minus x squared plus 4x plus 5. i think i'm more comfortable with these um form right without general format compared to this one right okay so we need the coordinates of d d is the turning point so x at the turning point at least x is equals to minus b divided by 2a so minus 4 divided by 2 multiplied by minus 1 so 4 divided by 2 is 2 okay there we go and then f of 2 we want to substitute 2 into f of x so minus 2 squared plus 4 multiplied by 2 plus 5 uh, this is equals to 9 so f of 2 is equals to 9 so this point when x is equals to 2 
and y is equals to 9 it lies on g of x so we can substitute it into g of x in doing that we're going to have 9 is equals to b to the power 2 we want the same exponents so that we can just equate the basis how do we do that with 9 3 to the power 2 is equals to b to the power 2 3 is equals to b there we go so g of x is just equals to 3 to the power um, x right there we go that is 5.1.2 then 5.1.3 determine the values of x for which g of x is greater or equals to 9 well we don't need to calculate anything here we can just see here that take a look at this when x is equals to 3 g of x is equals to 9 but when x is equals to 4 g of x will be greater than 9 and when x is equals to 2 g of x well not 3 uh, this is actually 2 right when x is equals to 2 g of x is equals to 9 and then when x is equals to 3 g of x will be equals to 27 right 3 to the power 3 but when x is equals to 1 g of x will be equals to 3 so we can clearly see that g of x is greater or equals to 9 when x is greater or equals to 2 that is our solution i think we can also solve this one algebraically uh, let's see if we can do that 3 to the power x greater or equals to 9 so 3 to the x greater or equals to 3 to the 2 so when x is greater or equals to 2 yeah we can actually do this algebraically but uh, there we go that is 5.1.3 5.1.4 write down the equation of h if so this is 5.1.4 if h of x is equals to f of x plus 2 minus 9 okay let's so let's do one operation at a time let's figure out this part let's figure out this part f of x plus 2 right so in place of x we're just going to substitute x plus 2 that's what that statement means it means to go to f of x and substitute x plus 2 in place of x so we're gonna have minus in place of x x plus 2 minus 2 everything squared plus 9 so this is equals to so this is f of x plus 2 and this is equals to minus well x squared plus 9 so we have taken care of that part now let's take care of this part minus 9 so we're gonna have f of x plus 2 and then we just subtract 9 this is equals to minus ah, this is just x squared okay plus 9 and then minus 9 right the 9 uh, that is here we are counting for this we are counting for that so um, f of x plus 2 minus 9 is going to be equal to minus x squared plus 9 minus 9 is 0. So there we go. This is f of x plus 2 minus 9. 5.1.4. Let's take a look at 5.1.5. So 5.1.5. How can the domain of h be restricted so that h inverse will be a function? Well, h of x is equal to minus x squared so h inverse uh, we have x being equal to minus y squared minus x is equal to y squared so y is equal to the square root of minus x so in order for this to be a function we need x to be less or equals to zero because when x is equal to zero we're gonna have square root of zero that is defined and then when x is equal to let's say minus one when i have minus multiplied by minus one which is positive and that is totally fine but when x is greater than zero issues arise let's say for instance x is equal to four we're going to have the square root of minus four which is going to give us undefined so that's what we need we need x to be equal to or less than zero 5.1.5 there we go 5.1.6 let's take a look at what's happening here we're supposed to show algebraically that g of x plus a half is equal to 
square root of 3 g of x okay let's see um g of x plus a half so um in place of x we need to substitute x plus a half okay i think that re that requires us to use exponent exponential loss yes because this is equals to 3 to the x multiplied by 3 to the half and the 3 to the half is the same as square root of 3 and then 3 to the x is just g of x um i think we have proved uh, that